Well, I appreciate it, Mike, and it's great that the games are going to be on uh, down there in South Jersey on 97.3 ESPN. We have a great relationship and looking forward to it. Yeah, and I know uh, this is the third year now of the Brett uh, Brown, Sam Hankey era, and uh, obviously uh, most people looking at this would say this is probably not a playoff team, but uh, you were at training camp. You saw the preseason. What are some of the things uh, that could excite fans going into this third year? Well, I think the biggest thing that people are looking forward to is the inside combination of Noel and Okafor. And they didn't get to play a whole lot together during the preseason just because of uh, Jalil's time was limited and Nerlens had taken a hard fall in one of the early games against Cleveland. But obviously to have two young, talented big guys playing together where Okafor's got the innate ability inside, the great hands, the great feet, and Nerlens is such a force on defense whose confidence grew by leaps and bounds just from a year ago. And it wasn't real an easy transition to the NBA for New Orleans. He had played it over a year last year. And, you know, then to see the strides that he made when you look back toward the end of the season of February, March, and April, he was one of the best players, period, uh, not just first-year players. So I think that's certainly something to look forward to. And, you know, I think it's going to be a work in progress just because of the injuries that we've heard so much about and how many guys have been out now. Covington is out, expected to be out for a couple of weeks. So, it, you know, they're not going to probably hit the ground running with all of their players, but I think once they start to get these guys back into the fold in terms of Marshall and Tony Roten and Covington and others, uh, that you'll see that the Sixers will begin to be uh, a lot more competitive. Tom, I know you didn't get a chance to see Stauskas really in game action, uh, but uh, he did say that he feels like a million bucks, he's ready to go, and obviously looks like he'll play tonight. What have you seen from him? I think he's a guy that the fans obviously are – uh, highly anticipating because you know here's a guy that uh, very uh, build is a very good shooter so what have you seen from Nick and how do you think he can help the team well just real quickly back to the million bucks and uh, they he couldn't say whether he was going to play <laughs> but he felt like a million bucks and then uh, toward the end of the interview one of the uh, beat reporters yelled well good luck tonight so it seems apparent that he will play although it's not official well, one thing, like, for example, yesterday, Mike, he made 30 straight three-pointers. Now, they were spot-up shots, not like he was coming off screens, but still 30 straight from three-point. And that shows that he obviously is going to be a guy that can play uh, out there and stretch the floor for the Sixers. He's got a lot of bounce. And, you know, you may or may not know, but he played for the Canadian national team this past summer in Mexico in uh, a lead-up to the Olympics. 14 games, and that might have been the reason he ended up with a stress uh, reaction, if you will, and kept out of the camp in some of the preseason, or all of the preseason, because of that summer activity. But he played really well, and it restored his confidence because he had an up-and-down year, mostly down with Sacramento last year, and uh, he was a highly sought-after player coming out of Michigan. He was the Big Ten Player of the Year, which is saying something right there. Uh, He's got size. He's got the ability to handle. I think he's going to be a more versatile player than people expect. He showed that when he played with Team Canada. None other than Steve Nash was, you know, trumpeting that fact that this guy's more than just a shooter. So he's somebody that the Sixers really looked at hard in that draft back in 2014, and now they they got him in a great deal, if you will, with Sacramento. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how he plays. And uh, and again, he's probably going to be a little rusty tonight because he. It's going to be really, like you say, they are going to be excited to watch. Uh, Tom McGinnis, the voice of the 76ers. The Sixers open against Boston here on 97.3 ESPN. And obviously this is uh, three years now, and a lot of people would think by now, Tom, that uh, you know playoffs would be a word that would be thrown around a lot. But the uh, plan or the timeline has been delayed, obviously with Embiid not being ready to go. That certainly – what are you thinking three years uh, being together here? Well, I, I think you have to address the Embiid. That, that was a setback. I mean, for him to miss another year with the surgery on his right foot, um, that, that was a crushing blow because he looked like he was really going to be, you know, I don't think that. Uh, I think he can be healthy. His bone is uh, in a position where it looks like he's going to make a full recovery. And, you know, you have to, too, uh, everyone, you know, you, you'll hear from people, that, oh, 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 oh. people don't know, and, and nobody can see. You look at like a player, for example, like Zadrew, formerly of the Cleveland Cavaliers, and now on their step. But he had a, he had similar issues with his feet. And he played seven straight years. So the, the hope uh, is that he will come back healthy, and then he'll be a major part of this rebuild. 
And I think, to be honest, it's probably taken longer than people had thought and that this year was going to be one where the Sixers made a, a measurable jump. And I think it's still going to be a year of development for players into the mix. I mean, throughout the entire preseason, like we had guys that out there were 19 and 20 years old. And that's what the team is made up of. So I think it's going to be, uh, you know, like I think maybe people expected to to make a jump in wins and then be on the threshold in the mid 30s and to be able to get into the, you know, maybe surprise and get into the playoffs. And I don't know that that's going to be the case this year. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a little slower certainly to start, like I said, because of the injuries. But uh, you know, the Brett, Brett Brown's players they they play like their hair's on fire. They play so hard, so it's definitely going to be a competitive, young, fun team to watch. He described the offense uh, as ratty. How would you uh, define what that actually means? Well, I, for example, the most recent game was against this Boston team, and Boston's got some defensive-minded players, and they just knocked the Sixers back on their heels, and uh, it, it was really a struggle. I mean, they scored 65 points. The percentages, like last year, the Sixers shot you know less than 45 percent over 50 some odd times. So maybe Stauskas and a healthy Covington and Cannon, those guys can help to to change that to to make more shots. I, I don't know if that's ratty, but certainly you know you need to be more effective in scoring the basketball, and uh, and hopefully Okafor will do that with some more close range shots into the mix as well. But yeah, I mean it's. It, <laughs> They couldn't even get into their offense in that game against Boston, and I think Boston's going to come out all amped up tonight with the idea that it's home, their home opener, their season opener here in Boston. You're going to have to to get through there, but you know, for the Sixers, if they can get into transition, they love to play with pace, and that can that can open some things up a little bit. But yeah, I mean, often I think the injuries have probably hurt the offense more than they've hurt the defense. Yeah, and you mentioned pace, and uh, you know, Okafor, the first pick. Uh, a lot of people think he could be the best rookie in this field. Uh, how is he, in your opinion, from what you've seen, fitting in uh, with the offensive style that Brett likes to run? Well, they've gone to him a lot. You know, I mean, the way Coach Brown described it when we were down at Stockton was, it'll be you know the same up and down style, and then they'll sprinkle in. Okafor, what I've seen is they're they're going to him, and maybe it's because he hasn't played. He only averaged 20 minutes per game in the games he played. Maybe they thought while he was in there, well, let's go to him because he's not going to play the entire 48 minutes. But boy, they, uh, to me, he's touched the ball every single time he's been in there on the block. Um, and I think he's got to make some adjustments. You know, the, the double teams come quicker, and you know I've said this during the course of our broadcast, but it's like a quarterback. You know, you, you see how fast guys get the ball out in the NFL anymore on you know, these two, three, five-step drops. And if by chance you don't have the ball out of your hand, you know in your mind the clock, someone's going to smoke you. you got to get it out. It's the same thing when you get double teamed down low on the block. You know, if you're working with your back to the basket, you know a double team's coming. You know you're going to be in a quandary in a second if you're not able to get that ball out or to make a play uh, to get to the basket. I think that's something he's got to, to work on a little bit. And then he's got to, if he had a dinged up right knee, he's got to get healthy and get in great shape to be able to be, as Brett Brown has said so many times, in career best fitness to play at, at this level and, and run the floor and be a defensive player. Um, but he's so gifted. He's totally team. He's a great young man. I think, to be honest, he can't miss. It's going to be a, an exciting thing to be able to watch him. I think that will be one of the more fun things to watch throughout the course of the year. Tom again is the voice of the 76ers. Last one for you, Tom, is uh, obviously you got the game tonight. I know you're getting ready for the broadcast. Uh, of the guys who are a little under the radar, the Cannons, the Hollis, uh, the Jeremy Grant, Jakar, which of those guys impressed you from last year to this year at camp? Who has made big strides that you think we'll, uh, we will see that on the floor this year? Well, I think Jeremy's got maybe the best upside of all of those guys because he's a really athletic player who's got uh, quite, quite a physique, and he's just gotten so much better just since last year. Uh, Jakar is a, a very good wing defender, but from Jakar, to me, you need him to see him to make shots. It seems like he can get anywhere he wants, whenever he wants, but then sometimes he gets in there and he doesn't finish, and I know he's young, but at some point you got to be able to make those to be able to fulfill your potential. Cannon is a guy that you know ended up getting hurt toward the end of the year. Uh, you know, can, can he be a distributor? Because he, he's definitely a shooter and a scorer, and you need that. And Hollis has been steady. He's actually been here the longest. So 
So I think, you know, in summation, I think Jeremy Grant has got a chance to really be a good two-way player and somebody that can be in the mix for for a long time for the 76ers. All right, Tom McGinnis in the 76ers start their journey tonight. And, of course, they're in Boston. They'll be back Friday night with the home opener and then the Cavaliers on Monday. I'll be at that game on Monday night uh, checking out uh, LeBron and the guys. And, of course, uh, Tom McGinnis will have the call here on 97.3. Tom, enjoy the broadcast in the season, and uh, we'll be talking to you throughout the year, pal. Okay, thank you for the time.